She has a countless collection of awards and medals, but life isn't always about the wins. Two-time Olympic gold medalist and author of Unforgiving, Lindsay Jacobellis is here. Good morning, Lindsay. Good to Good have morning. you. Welcome to San Diego. Thank you so much. Take us back to 2006. I know that we have some friends that, um, you know, may not have even been born around that, that time that could be watching. Tell us a little bit about what happened at the Olympics. So that was the first time my sport was in the Olympics, and I had an excellent running up and showing, you know, some great promise to win, and I was leading, and I grabbed my board on the second to last jump and I fell, making myself lose out on winning a gold medal. And it was such a challenging time for myself. And, you know, looking back now, seeing how that mistake really helped me have to refocus the way I approached going into competitions to finally get myself prepared for Beijing was very, very challenging. When you say your sport, what sport is that? <laughs> this is snowboard cross. Snowboard. Is there a snowboard <laughs> cross? Yes. Okay, which is? Which is when four racers go down a course at the same time over jumps, bank turns, whoops, all different types of obstacles, and the first two qualify to the next round in the bottom two are eliminated until you have your final four. Okay, I ask as somebody that's never gotten <laughs> on skis in their entire life, I love watching it. Uh, but how amazing, because we've talked about this many times, and I'm sure that people have heard the saying, it's about falling down, but getting back up. Uh, that's the important thing in life. And when you fell down, what motivated you? What gave you that energy, that decision to say, hey, I, I got to get up and, and do something with this? I've always been a competitor, and it's never been in my DNA to quit. And so I kept pushing myself to uh, those next levels in my sport and my career. However, I was always having these challenges around the Olympic cycle when it would get built up because my narrative and my story would come back around and it would be really hard to drown out that noise to really focus on the task at hand. And so I had to figure out a different approach and find a way to move past those that uh, narrative or what I had been associated with to give myself the best opportunity to come out with a medal. How do you do that, Lindsay? Because I'm sure there's families watching right now. We know how competitive even young children can be nowadays in, in sports. And we, I don't know if you would agree or not, but we live in an environment where it's a very win-win, everybody wins, and that's not what life is about. You don't win all the time. And that's, that's so true, and especially we don't see those challenging moments in between. We're seeing all the glorified moments on social mm. media. You're seeing all the positive moments, and you're not always seeing the work in between. So what really was the huge factor that played into my growth as an individual and an athlete was probably in 2016 when I started working with Denise Shull of the Rethink Group, and she really changed how I broke down uh, my emotional reactions to apply that instead of being so consumed. And it really helped save energy, which obviously you're trying to save energy when you're trying to compete at the highest level. But it was also the process of learning to forgive myself after a mistake that I made that I had to really you know, atone for the, the whole career I had. Forgive yourself and your book is called Unforgiving, <laughs> Unforgiving. Uh, when people read this book, what do you want them to take away? I would really love to inspire anyone and give anyone hope that needs it because more likely everyone's made mistakes, whether it's on a big stage or not, but we have to learn how to move past those moments. Things happen in the past and we have to figure out a way to dust ourselves off and keep going and move forward because we have to keep you know, challenging ourselves and we have to find that inner strength to do so. You say we have to find a way. It's so much easier said than done <laughs> because the narrative inside and the stories we tell ourselves are usually very unforgiving, unforgiving. to ourselves. So if you could leave one piece of advice, Lindsay, here in San Diego for people who are watching and maybe struggling with this and changing their narrative, what would you tell them? I would say, you know, seek the help that you need, friends, family, or even anything more. It's really learning how to be kind to yourself and that 
that can be broken down even on a daily basis with something very, very small, and you can build on that. Of course, you'll have those moments where you backslide, but that's what you have your support system and your, your group that is there to help support you yeah, and, and all that. And you're proof of that, and you're proof of that. <laughs> Lindsay, thank you uh, for coming here. Again, the book is called Unforgiving, and it's out now. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna take a short break. We'll be right back. Thank you.